Van der Waals forces. There's a bit of a dilemma here. We said once before that when molecules have charges, and charges are commonplace, that there'll be attractions between molecules, intermolecular bonds. And we also said that as, the, as these charges become larger, the attraction will become stronger. So, if we have very large charges, oops, we said we'd have strong intermolecular bonds. But this raises the question, what if there are no charges? What if we have molecules which are non-polar? Will there be attractions between these molecules? You would expect the answer to be no. But there are. Where's the evidence? Well, let's think of a molecule which has no charges. Take a molecule, for example, like bromine, Br2, made from two identical bromine atoms. They have identical electronegativities, and therefore the electrons are evenly shared, and the molecule is non-polar. But there must be bonds between bromine molecules, because bromine is a liquid. And the only way that bromine can be a liquid is to have intermolecular bonding. So what's the source of these intermolecular bonds? Well, these are our van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are forces which can operate even in the absence of charges. The theory goes something like this. Going around, this, going around these bromine atoms, we have electrons. And as electrons go around these atoms, they get bunched up at one end. Momentarily, just for an instant, they tend to end up all together at one end. In that instant, this end of the molecule becomes slightly negatively charged, where all the negative electrons are. Of course, the other side of the molecule ends up with a temporary little positive charge. If the same effect is happening on a neighboring bromine molecule, then we'll have the potential for attractions. The, ne the negative end of this molecule and the positive end of this bromine molecule will attract van der Waals force. The theory does sound a bit dubious, but can we convince ourselves that it's true? Well, if this theory is true, then it should be the case that the more electrons there are, the larger the charge is, the stronger the attraction. Here's the evidence. If we look at fluorine, fluorine molecules contain only 18 electrons. And fluorine is a gas. As we go through the halogens, the number of electrons in the molecules increases. In the case of chlorine, it's 34 electrons. Still a gas, but a little bit harder to, to melt and boil. In the case of bromine, as we've said a moment ago, bromine atoms each have 35 electrons, 70 electrons per molecule. Bromine is a liquid. Why is bromine a liquid? Because with more electrons, there are more bunch, there's more bunching going on, there are larger charges and stronger van der Waals forces. And if we take this to a logical conclusion, iodine, which has the most electrons of all, 106 electrons per molecule, is a solid. Why is iodine a solid? Because it has the strongest van der Waals forces. To finish, to conclude, as we go down group 7, the halogens, as the number of electrons in the molecule increases, the charges increase, and the van der Waals forces become stronger.